Hello everyone, today we're going to look at a blast from the past. In 1890, a two-game telegraph match was played between the world champion Wilhelm Steinitz and his two-time challenger, Mikhail Chigorin. And like they do in the TCEC computer championships, these two games that were played in the cable match started off at set positions. And the two positions had become a bone of contention between the two players. But in both games, Steinitz was actually a pawn up and his opponent Chigorin had compensation in the form of open lines and peace activity. In each game, each player had 48 hours to make the moves and were allowed to consult one player. And the two matches were widely billed as matching the old school romantic style of Chigorin against the positional and modern school of Steinitz. And Steinitz actually believed he was in the winning positions in both games due to being a pawn up. And he said, if I don't commit an error, I fancy I shall win both games because I have a pawn to the good in either. And according to the principles I've laid down, I must win. So Steinitz was known as a great defender and also a great attacker. Whilst Chigrin played with the sole purpose of demonstrating a superiority in one's player's conception of how chess should be played. And Matthew Sadler writes in his new book actually about Alpha Zero that these games are strangely similar to Stockfish versus Alpha Zero. I guess in the sense that they've had set positions and in the sense that Chigorin also has the open files and dynamic pieces versus the material of Steinitz and Stockfish. So the first game was actually an Evans Gambit where Queen F6 for Black was put to the test and the additional moves of D4 and Knight H6 were stipulated to match the position of Steinitz's book. So here in the first game, Chigorin is white, Steinitz is black, and the game stipulates it must be an Evans Gambit and get to d4 and knight h6. So this happened with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, Chigorin plays bishop c4, bishop c5, and b4 is the Evans Gambit. Bishop takes b4 and c3 attacking the bishop. The bishop drops back to a5. In traditional theory now, white could play e d4, and after e takes, then would come castles and d takes c3, and queen b3 attacking the f7 pawn, and queen f6 would defend, followed by e5 and queen g6, whereupon white now plays knight takes c3, and after move like knight g7, white can play bishop a3. The position is considered equal, but white does have nice dynamic pieces, but black does have the extra material. But in this cable match, Castles was played, and this is Steinitz's move, Queen F6. And after D4, Knight H6, we reach the first opening position. And this is where the players started to play their own chess. So Chigrin played Bishop G5, attacking the Queen. So here black is a pawn up, but white now has some dynamic piece play. Queen d6 was played by Steinitz, and Chigrin went in for d5, attacking this knight. The knight drops back to d8, and there are several options here that white could play now. I personally think this nice line of knight bd2 is really nice, because after bishop takes c3, winning another pawn, white can place their rook on c1, an open file, and once the bishop drops back to a5, white could play a move like bishop d3, releasing space to place their knight on c4 with a lot of consequences. If bishop takes d2, knight takes d2, again knight c4 is a big threat. Black can play queen g6, but h4 defends the bishop. And if black castles to gain some development, bishop b7 is such a nice move, it attacks a rook. If rook e8, white can now start harassing the black queen with h5. And if queen b6, which is the only move, Knight c4 harasses it again, queen d4, and white can play bishop g4, threatening bishop e3. The queen can go back to c5 of course, but then white can play take on h6, take on h6, and knight e3, attacking the queen again. If the queen drops back, queen g4, king h8, and queen h4, white's just got a tremendously nice position here, with threats of knight f5, rook b1 coming. And black's got a lot of defending to do here. But back to the game. But after knight d8, Chigrin didn't go for knight bd2. Instead he played queen a4, which is still a very nice move, attacking the bishop. The bishop moves to b6. And white now plays knight to a3, threatening knight b5 ideas. 
So black plays c6 to stop this. But then we see what we saw in the previous variation. White drops their bishop back to e2 and threatens knight c4 now. Bishop c7 is played. And knight c4 is played by Chigorin attacking the queen. If queen g6, white could play knight to e3. Whereupon they're going to probably jump into f5 at some point. And maybe even play knight to h4 at some point as well. If castles, again, white can play bishop e7 after rook e8. And play a move like knight h4 and actually trap the black queen. So black definitely won't want this. So after knight c4, Steinitz places a queen on f8 to give it some safety. But if we just look at black's position now, they're very cramped and the pieces are in terrible positions. The knight h6 is on the rim. Knights on the rim are dim, as we've already learned. And both bishops are really underdeveloped. The knight on d8 looks really awkward and the queen on f8 is struggling for space. Uh, I feel like black's in a terrible position. All for an extra pawn. d6 was now played by Chigrin. So this is a temporary sacrifice. So after bishop takes d6, the point is that white now gains more space and an advantage. The bishop on d6 is really awkwardly placed. And this allows white to now play knight to b6, attacking the rook. And that can't be captured due to queen takes a8. So rook b8 is played. And white wins their pawn back with queen takes a7, attacking the rook. Black finally redevelops their knight to e6, attacking the bishop on g5. But Chigurin now plays a really clever move. He plays bishop to c1, and the idea is to play bishop to a3, and undermine and overload this bishop on d6, because it's now protecting the rook on b8. If black loses that rook, I feel like it's game over. Steinitz now tries to redevelop their other knight to g8, maybe to play knight e7 or knight f6. And bishop a3 is played by white. And the point is that white wants to play rook d1 at some point and just completely overload this bishop on d6. c5 is played by black to block this bishop on a3 and using the knight on e6 to do so. And now rook a d1, again trying to overload this bishop. Steinitz plays knight to f6. Maybe trying to play knight to e4 and protect the bishop on d6. But Chigurin now plays bishop c4 with the idea of taking on e6 and maybe taking on c5 at a later date. And still this rook is attacked on b8, let's not forget. So bishop c7 is played by Steinitz. And now knight d5 attacking the bishop on c7. If knight takes on d5 here, e takes d5 can be played. And after knight f4 let's say. White can just play d6 and attack the bishop. If bishop takes, white can play bishop takes c5 and black's forced to take on c5 whereupon white will now take on b8. And yeah, this is a really nice position for white and black could resign in this position. In the game though, it finished off with bishop to d6 by black. And here Chigrin played a great move, just knight to h4, aiming to play knight to f5. Chigurin was famed for his handling of the knights and here he finds very nice outposts on d5 and f5 for his two knights. In the game Steinitz played knight takes d5 so getting rid of one of these knights. But now Chigurin just played knight to f5 so if that knight on d5 ever moves knight takes d6 will be played and it's just the intermezzo move that white can play. g6 was played by Steinitz, knight takes d6 was played by white, queen takes d6 and now just bishop takes d5, where white's now threatening to play bishop takes e6 and attack the queen. And again, the rook on b8 is still under threat. Queen c7 gets off the d file, but now just bishop takes e6 anyway. And after f takes, white can just play bishop takes c5. And now he's threatening bishop d6. Black now has no other option than to play rook a8 and just sacrifice the exchange. So white takes on a8, the queen takes on c5, and white's now in a one position. I'll show you the remaining moves really quickly. Queen a4 is played by white, king d8, and rook d2, king c7 and rook b1 by white. And basically after rook d8, Chigrin plays rook b5 attacking the queen, queen c6, queen b4, d6 and now a4. After queen e8, rook b6, white's just in tremendous control. The bishop on c8 is just not getting out. Queen f8, 
Queen a5 with all sorts of threats for white. After d5 captures King b8 and d6, black actually resigns the game and Chigrin wins the first game as white. So again there are definitely similar themes to Alpha Zero vs Stockfish in this game. And again white's just battered black with piece superiority over material. In the second game William Steinitz was white and Chigrin was black. And in this game the position stipulated was a two knights defence where white would play knight to h3 as you'll see in a second. What I should also say is both games were played simultaneously, so each player relayed two moves at each time. So in this game, Steinitz played e4, and the game continued e5, knight f3, knight c6, white played bishop c4, knight f6 from black, and knight g5, where two pieces are attacking f7, and this is standard opening theory after d5, e takes d5, black plays knight to a5, attacking the bishop, Bishop b5 is played, after c6, captures, captures, white drops a bishop back to e2, black plays h6, and this is Steinitz's move, knight to h3, and this is where the game actually started. Now you may be thinking straight away, surely black could just take on h3? Well, it's not that good for black to do this, because you don't really want to give up your white squared bishop to white this early on especially with so many weaknesses around the Dark King, such as the c6 pawn. So, in the game, Chigrin now played bishop c5, just developing a piece. d3 from white, black castled, and Steinitz played knight to c3. So in this opening, white is a pawn up, but black, again, has some nice piece play. And white does have to be quite careful in this opening. And there's a reason now it's not seen in many, many top level games because white does have to be quite careful and it doesn't necessarily give white an advantage. Black played knight to d5 to centralize and prepare f5. And Steinitz plays knight to a4, so attacking this bishop on c5. So black plays bishop to d6. Chigurin wants to keep this bishop on the board. Knight g1 now from Steinitz. This looks like a bizarre move, but actually I think he wants to reroute it to f3. So it makes a bit of sense because there's nowhere for it to go from the h3 square. So black here has an array of moves that they could play. Queen e7 was one of them. And if white now continues their plan with knight to f3, black can play e4. After captures, captures. The queen's threatening the knight on a4, so b3 to protect. And what black can actually play rook to e8 here and stop white from castling because they're doubling up on this e2 bishop. King f1 is probably the best move. After queen e7 to drop back, bishop d3 and knight b7. Black's got a decent position, but slightly better. King g1, knight c5, captures, captures. After the smoke's somewhat cleared, black's got a very nice position because white can't castle anymore. Bishop b2 next from white will probably come, but then black can play bishop g4. And even though black's a pawn down, they've got more dynamic piece play. And White's got to solve the issue of trying to castle their king and get that rook on h1 out. In the game though, Chigrin actually went for f5 here. So just launching these two pawns up the board in the centre. Steinitz plays c3 here. And actually Chigrin now could have played e4. And maybe even threatening to play f4 and e3. If captures here, Black can just recapture and now they've got the open f file. If queen d4 to centralise. Queen e7 from Black. Uh, and bishop c5 could be a potential threat if that knight on a4 ever gets captured or moved away. White can continue with bishop e3. It looks okay for white here, but I'll give you some context. Stockfish gives this as minus 4 for black. So that's a lot of advantage for black. Black could play bishop f4 here, for instance. And if castles, queen g5. Queen takes g2 is threatened, and bishop takes e3 is also a big threat. So if g3, black can take... And just knight takes e3. Threatening rook on d1. Queen c5. And after knight takes d1 check, they swap queens. But black now is the exchange up in, in a totally one end game. So this could have been played for black. e4 was a devastating move actually. Instead Chigrin opted for bishop d7. So eyeing up this a4 knight with the bishop and just connecting their back rank pieces. Steinitz now played d4. 
But this actually just allows black to now start launching these pawns of the board with e4. Uh, and this stops white from developing their knight on g1 now. Steinitz continued with c4, but this just actually weakens white's position somewhat. Here black could have actually played knight b4 as a consequence of playing the c4 move. And if bishop d2, black can play f4 and start launching the pawns up. If c5, black can afford actually to play queen h4 here. And if white starts capturing pieces, they can play e3 here. Threatening queen takes f f2, checkmate. If g3 in this position, e takes f2, check. And if king takes, just f takes g3. And white's in a lot of trouble, it's check. And g2 or g takes h2 are coming with check as well. So in this position, g3 can't be played queen d3 is another potential option but we'll just show you the power of black's position with moves like bishop f5 queen c3 it gets a bit messy after queen takes f2 check king d1 but black can now just afford to take on g2 if a move like c takes d6 winning another piece black can take the rook and now he's threatening queen takes g1 with check and pick up the other rook as well. So queen e1, but black's got a major advantage. They can play queen e4, threatening mate on c2 now. If the queen moves back to c3, they can use the power of triangulation, just queen g2, and attack the knight on g1 once again. And if queen e1, they can play a move like knight b7, and just move the knight back. And even though white appears to have two pieces for the rook, their king side has been absolutely destroyed and this f4 pawn and e3 pawn are so far up the board it's going to cause white long term issues. So after Steinitz played c4, knight b4 was the option, but Shigerin decided to drop it back to e7 instead. Steinitz now reroutes the knight on a4 to c3 and black plays bishop to e6, attacking the pawn on c4. B3 was played by white, but again this leaves the C3 square rather weak now and allows black to dominate some dark squares with bishop B4. Steinitz obviously protects the knight with bishop B2, but now Chiggering goes in for the kill with F4, preparing moves like F3 and opening up the E-file. Queen C2 was played, so attacking the E4 pawn and preparing white to castle queenside. But what Steinitz seems to have forgotten is that d4 can now be taken, so Chigrin just accepts this. Queen takes d4, and I feel like White's in a busted position now. I don't think they should have given up his d4 pawn so easily. In the game, Steinitz now played king f1, so getting off this bishop b4 diagonal, and maybe trying to open up bishop b2 for themselves. But the attack is just now too quick for black. f3 was played by Chigrin, so attacking the bishop on e2. So Steinitz took on f3. E takes f3 and again the bishop is under attack. If knight takes the pawn, black just plays bishop to h3. And if king g1 is played, let's say, just queen g4 is checkmate. Uh, and if king e1, just rook takes f3 is really strong. If bishop recaptures, black can afford to calmly play rook to e8. Um, and after bishop e2 to block the e-file, black can play knight f5. And even though black is the exchange down here, Black's pieces are in amazing positions and it's only a matter of time until they find a way to checkmate or win more material. So after e takes f3, Steinitz took the pawn with the bishop. And to demonstrate the power of Black's position, Black can actually play knight takes c4 here if they wanted to. So sacrificing the knight. And if b takes c4, they can play queen takes c4 with check. And if king g2, Black can now play rook takes f3 amazingly. If the king captures, just queen g4 check, king e3 and rook d8, and there's a mating net, so white's going to get mated, the king's just so exposed. So after rook takes f3 in that position, knight takes f3 could be played as well, but of course black can actually pick up a piece back with queen g4 check, king f1 and queen takes f3, attacking the rook on h1. So in this position, black is the exchange down, once again, but as an extra pawn, but it's more to do with the power of the pieces. Bishop c4 is a major threat, and rook f8 or rook e8 or rook d8 even, or bishop h3 and queen h3 are very strong moves. 
Now if the queen ever moves away from c2, the bishop can capture on c3 as well. So white's in a lot of trouble. So that was after knight takes c4. But in the game, Chigurin kept it really simple. He played bishop to f5, attacking the queen. And now it gets rather complicated, actually. Because Steinitz goes in for some complications. Probably the best thing to do if you're losing. He plays knight to e4. So what does this do? Well, it blocks the bishop on f5. And now he's unleashed his own bishop to attack the queen. But chigurin has got it all figured out. He plays bishop takes e4. So once again, attacking the queen on c2. If bishop takes e4, then black can actually play rook takes f2 with check. And if queen takes, just take on e4. And the point of this move is that the queen's attacking h1. And rook f8 is also coming in with a massive attack. So if the bishop takes e4, Steinitz opted for queen e2 instead. Attacking the bishop on e4 again. And the bishop on b2 is attacking black's queen. However... Chigrin once again figured it out, he played bishop takes f3 and again attacks white's queen. The point of this though is that now Steinitz can play queen e6 check. After king h7, white can pick up the queen on d4. However, black can now pick up the rook on h1. So after everything's cleared, who's winning this position? Well, it's got to be said black is probably still winning. They've got two minor pieces and a rook for the queen. And white's got a queen and a pawn for three pieces. I just don't think that's enough for white. In the game, Steinitz played queen h3. And knight f5 is now played by Chigurin. So he's got very dynamic pieces here. Bishop e5 is played to move away from that knight. And finally, black just develops again with rook a8, centralising the two rooks. Bishop f4 is played, and now knight d4. So attacking the bishop once again. Looks like Steinitz has finally had enough, so he plays queen d3 check. Black plays bishop e4 to re-centralise. After captures, black captures on f4, and is now threatening to play moves like bishop g2 check and pick up white's queen. f3 is played by Steinitz, but this actually doesn't do anything because the f3 pawn is pinned. So black just doubles their rooks, attacks this f3 pawn twice. Steinitz takes on a7, uh, and after c5 by black, I think that's a really nice move, really nice touch. It just cements black's position, and just opens up the diagonal for this bishop on e4 as well. Queen c7 was played, and actually black is probably just totally winning this. I think if I was in this position, I'd probably just play bishop takes f3. And if knight captures, rook captures, and king g2. Uh, this just shows black's superiority that they're still winning this position even when an amateur like me just takes on f3 with a bishop. But no, Chigurin's no amateur, he played knight to c6. White plays a3, and now black decides to keep their white squared bishop. It's more powerful than rook actually, so he plays rook takes f3 first with check. After knight takes f3, rook takes f3, king g1. Black plays bishop to d2, and the point is that after bishop e3 check, um, black's just going to move their rook back to a move like f7, and it'll be checkmate, and, and White's king is actually caught in the corner. So White's resigned this game, and Steinitz lost both matches, and Chigurin won 2-0 in the cable match. But anyway, the only reason I showed you this game was because I thought it was very similar to a Stockfish and Alpha Zero match, where one side is holding on to material, and the other side is trying to attack. And I think we've learned that it's better to be the attacker rather than defender in these type of positions. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the background between these two games and the games themselves. Please drop me a like or subscribe if you did. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you very much.